Whether you're new to Desmos or a pro, you are going to love the graphing tips that I've got for you today. I've also gotten some hidden features to show you towards the end, so stick around. Let's go ahead and dive in with some basics and then we're gonna quickly get into some tips that you may not know about. So I'm here in Desmos and over here on the left-hand side, I've got my expression list and I'm just gonna type in Y equals, let's just do an X squared minus four. Now to get that power, I use the caret button, which is on my six on my keyboard. So I've got this and there's a lot of things that I can now do with it. I can hide it by clicking on the circle next to it in the expression list and then I can click on it again. If I click and hold that circle, it gives me some additional options and I can change the way that that line is. I can also change the thickness of the line by changing that 2.5 to say a five. And then I can use one of the default colors to also change the color. Um, let me just click out of this so I'm back in my expression list and I want to show you what we've got in the gear. Now again, I'm going to show you some basics first, but then I'm going to quickly jump into some much more advanced features. Okay, so in graph settings, the things that I really wanna show you here are taking off um, the minor grid lines. I do this one quite a bit. Um, you can also, of course, change your X and Y axis. Let's just say that I wanted these both to be from negative 10 to 10. So I'm just gonna type right over those values and I get now the option for zoom square. And this will even up the scale on your X and your Y axis. So I can choose that zoom square. So now I've got a really nice scale. Now, once I've messed around with my graph a little bit, I can use this default viewport to get me back to the default view. Now I can use my mouse a lot as well. So I can click, hold and drag this around. My mouse also happens to have a roller on it so I can roll to zoom in and to zoom out and if you happen to have a touchpad or you're doing this on your phone you can use two fingers to pinch out and in to zoom in and to zoom out Let's go ahead and identify some points on this graph. Desmos does a really great job of identifying key points. So if I click on the graph, it is gonna give me, and it's really hard to see there, but it gives me these points in gray and the points that it's given me for this parabola are the X intercepts and that Y intercept or vertex. Now next to those points, I just clicked on them one time and if I click away, they disappear. Now if I click on the graph again and I click that point and I get this little export point to the expression list, this will fix the point on my graph and I can also ask it for a label. So now I've labeled that point, it's showing up in green. Let's change that color. So I'm just gonna click and hold and I'm gonna change that color to say maybe orange so it shows up a little bit better and then you've got these options down here to move the label around to the best position. To have this point show up even better I can make it larger by changing the 8 to a 10 and I can also add a point outline. Now the default label is the coordinates, but let's say that you wanted to change this to X intercept. So I can just click on the line next to label and just start typing. So I'm just gonna do X dash INT for X intercept. Let's also get the table of points that goes along with our parabola. So I'm gonna click on the gear up here. This is to edit our list. So I'm gonna click on that gear and notice how we get some options that are showing up now in our expression list. I'm gonna choose the table next to my X squared minus four. And if I create that table, it defaults to some points. And those points are showing up again in green and I want them to show up. So I'm gonna change those to maybe um, let's change those to black. I don't know if that's any better. How about to red? So I'm going to change those points to red. Now these points are just the default ones that Canvas gave me. I can type in additional points as a way of finding the Y coordinate that corresponds with an X coordinate. So let's say that we want to know what's happening at say an X value of five and it gives me a 21. I can also do say a negative seven and then it gives me a 45. Now some of these points aren't showing up and as I typed some things into my table, this little zoom fit showed up. 
This shows up whenever you are graphing a table of values and it's a great way to find your data. I'm gonna click on this zoom fit and it's gonna show me the points that are also at five, there it is, and the one at negative seven, there's the point there at negative seven. I know we're talking about graphing, but there's just one more thing that I can't help but share with you and that's changing the Y into function notation. So I'm gonna just, um, highlight the Y and I'm going to type right over it and change this into F of X. And then I can also start to evaluate this. So I can do F of three and I get the value there of five. Okay, let's move on to a different type of graph. I'm going to use function notation again as I define this next graph. So this is going to be F of X is equal to cosine X. Even if you're not doing trig, that's okay. You're still gonna learn a bunch here. Now with this, I can also define a point that goes along with our graph. So I can do a comma F of A, and then it says, do you wanna add a slider? And I'm gonna say yes. Notice how A has been automatically set to one, and notice that the point that we've got right here is that one comma 0.54, whatever it happens to be. Now I can also slide through this and see how the point follows the graph. But I notice that I've got this scale here that's in increments of five, really one. I would much rather that be in increments of pi. So I'm gonna go to my graph settings and I'm gonna change the step for the X to be in terms of pi. And I also have this cosine graph, which is fairly flat. So instead I'm gonna change my Y axis bounds to go from negative two to two. Okay, so it's looking much better, but I wanna do one more thing. I wanna really show whoever's looking at this that this cosine graph continues on and on and on. So I'm gonna do one more thing, and that's to add the slider value A into one of my bounds. This is a brand new feature in Desmos. So I'm gonna click my graph settings, and instead of the X going from a fixed negative 10 to 9.9, .9, whatever that is, I'm gonna use my value A. And I'm gonna say A minus, I'm gonna go negative two pi on one side, so that would be 6.28. You could use whatever number you want. And then just to keep it symmetric, I do A plus whatever number you want. And I'm gonna do 6.28 here. Okay, so I've got everything else how I want it. Let me just click off of this. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make my point bigger. So I'm gonna click and hold on that circle and I'm gonna make my point much bigger, say at 16. And I'm gonna do an outline so it shows up really nice. And then I am going to play through this. I could slide through this, but I could also play through. So I can play through it and I can see that point going along my cosine graph. One more thing that you can do here and that's to click on this and you can change the bounds for A, but you can also change the step for A. So say you wanted to go um, in a step of pi, and then it's just gonna skip through those values of pi now, hitting each of the maximum and minimums. Okay, so many options there. Those are the new dynamic bounds. I've got so much more to show you. I'm gonna clear my list here. So let's just go ahead and clear that list. And it says error provided in the viewpoint. So I'm just gonna click my default viewpoint. So I don't need to go back and fix all of that. Um, I'm gonna go right back to that parabola, x squared using that caret key. So x squared arrowing over and then minus four. And I'm gonna put a line in as well. So I'm gonna go y is equal to, um, let's do x plus one. Now I've got a couple of intersection points and remember that Desmos does a great job of labeling key points. It is labeling an intersection point for me and I can export that to my expression list by clicking this button right here. And then I can also label it by typing in intersection. I'm not gonna do that. There is a second intersection point. Let me click on the graph again and I've got my second intersection point here. If I click on that purple graph, it gives me the vertex, which is the y-intercept, and the x-intercepts. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the parabola. 
Let's get rid of this parabola also because I want to redefine it in vertex form and incorporate some sliders. So in vertex form, it would be f, I'm going to do f of x, you could do y, is equal to, um, I'm going to do one with numbers in it. So I'm going to have a stretch of 2 and then x minus 1 parentheses and then I'm going to use my caret key for squared, so caret squared and then over and I want the, um, the y for the vertex to be at maybe negative 3, so minus 3. So I've got some really great points here, but I can also incorporate these each as sliders. So if I want that vertical stretch or compression to be a slider instead, I'm going to replace that with an A and I'm going to add a slider. And it gave me two sliders, I'm not sure why, let me get rid of one of those. I also want to replace the negative one with a minus h because that matches our vertex. I'm going to add a slider there. Just I'm going to click it one time. And then on the end here, this would be plus k. So I've got plus k and I'm going to add a slider for this. Everything right now is fixed at 1, 1, 1. We can change the value of the sliders by clicking, holding, and sliding them, but we can also change the values by typing right over them. So I can say that I wanted that k to be at negative 3, I wanted h to be at 2, and I wanted that vertical stretch to be a factor of 2. And I've got that graph. We haven't touched on graphing inequalities, so let me go ahead and clear my list and let's graph some inequalities next. You're gonna see some shading, and then I've got a really great tip for you at the end. Okay, so I wanna do um, just a nice simple inequality. So I'm gonna do y is just using my greater than symbol. So y is greater than x plus two. So that's gonna be everything above the y-axis. And notice how it gave me a dashed line because of that greater than symbol. But if I wanted it to be a solid line and include the line and the shaded portion, I'm just gonna type an equal sign right next to the greater than symbol. It automatically changes it to a greater than or equal sign. So I'm just going to type that equals right next to it and it changes it into a solid line. Let's go ahead and put another one here and I'm going to put a circle. So I'm going to do x caret squared and then arrow over plus y caret squared and then I want to have the inside of a circle. So I'm going to do less than and let's have our circle be radius 5 so that would be less than 25. Um, you can change this to less than or equal by typing equals right next to the less than. So I've got it here, but we can also do the outside of the graph by doing greater than or equals. So greater than or equals. So inequalities are really easy. And notice also how you can graph with y isolated on one side, or you can also graph a circle without a problem. Now I've got some special tips for you. If I click on this here, um, I just have a few default colors. But let's say that I wanted to define a different color. You can use any color that you want. You just need to bring it in to Desmos. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go to coolers.co. There are so many websites that you can go, including ChatGPT, to grab some colors. I'm just going to go through the generator just to show you how many different options there are and I don't have a color in mind. So I'm going to click start the generator and I can just continue to um, just click through these by hitting the space bar so I can get a lot of different colors here. Um, these are some great colors and some that I don't have in Desmos. Now Coolers gives me this hex code, but what I really want instead is the RGB red, green, blue code, and it's easy to get to. I'm just gonna click on View to get a different form of that, and I want the pink color, and I want this RGB right here, and I'm gonna copy it. Okay, so here's how we get it into Desmos. It's actually super easy. That was the hardest part. The easy part is getting the color into Desmos. I'm gonna click on an empty cell, and I'm gonna put a couple colors in. So I'm gonna call this color one. So I'm gonna go C, and then the number one, it will automatically subscript. So I'm just typing one right after, automatically subscripts, and then equals. Remember, this was RGB. So RGB parentheses, we copied those RGB values. So I just need to paste it in. I'm going to do a control V, V as in Victor, or you could do a command V. I'm going to do a control V. So a control V, and I've got that color now in my palette. If I click and hold on either of these circles, it shows up as one of of my color options. I can do this as many times as I want. Let's go ahead and grab another color. I'm gonna grab this blue one. So clicking on the blue one, I'm still in quick view. 
So I can grab the RGB values. I'm going to copy those and then Desmos. I can actually copy what I've got there in C1 and then just make some edits. So I'm going to click on the edit list. I want to duplicate this one and that is this icon here. So let's click duplicate, but this time I want this to be C2. So I just clicked on it again to get out of that. I'm going to backspace over the one, type a two instead, and I don't want these values. I'm going to get rid of those values and then I'm going to paste this in again and do a control V, control V, and I've got a second color there. Let's change that blue clicking and holding and I've got that other color there too. Let's just click outside of that. Now the final thing that I wanted to show you are some domain restrictions. I'm actually going to X these. Notice how I also lost those colors as I X'd them. Let's do some domain restrictions, which is going to give us some partial graphs and there's multiple multiple ways that you can do this. So I'm going to go y is equal to x squared minus 3 and let's shade this. So I want this to be greater than or equal to just changing that and I'm going to also put in here um, y is equal to I'm going to put my cosine graph in. So I'm going to go cosine of x. So for that cosine graph let's say that we only want the cosine between negative pi and pi for the x's. So I'm going to do this with curly brackets and then I put my domain restriction right in here and it's going to be negative pi pi, pi, so pi is less than x is less than positive pi, pi. And it gives me just that partial graph. Let me zoom in a little bit. Now the other thing that I want to do is to just graph this portion of the shaded area. I just want it to be below my cosine graph. So I can go up here to my parabola and I can add in um, curly brackets, so curly brackets. I want just the y values that are less than that cosine graph. So I'm going to say y is going to be less than and I want it to be less than cosine of x and I've got it just shaded there. Now Desmos does not just graph in 2D. It will also graph in 3D and in polar coordinates. So many more options. Take a look at my videos here.